Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's the CJ. It's time to give you guys another quick update on the roof tank. It's been a few weeks since my last update, and I figured this is a good time to catch you guys up on the latest. And everything that's been going on as far as, you know, my lighting and algae scrubber, my first attempt at dosing, and just everything else as far as losses, livestock, corals, you know, everything you want to know about. So it's going to be short and sweet, but let's go ahead and get to it. So let's start off with a quick look behind the tank and my filtration. You know, just in case anyone's new, this is a JBJ 45 gallon all-in-one aquarium. All-in-one meaning the sump, equipment, everything is housed behind the tank, behind the false wall. It has weirs and overflows and all that back here. Very easy to keep. Now, when it comes to my equipment, honestly, nothing's changed. Still running my Tunzi 9004 skimmer. Still running my algae scrubber. Still have my reactor disabled with nothing in it. Seachem's pine matrix for my biological. Filter floss for my mechanical and then Seachem's Carbon, which honestly I need to replace. It's well, well over, you know, two, three, four months old at this point, so I need to go ahead and get that replaced. But while we're back here, you know, as I always do, give you guys a quick look at the algae scrubber. A few weeks ago, I did show my full maintenance routine and cleaning this thing out. So if you missed that video, go back and check it out. But this is the growth sense. You know, honestly, I haven't looked at it. This is my first time opening this scrubber in three weeks. And I'm, you know, this is my first time looking at it just like you guys right now. So overall, you know, it was completely white and cleaned out. Definitely getting some growth, but far from the point of needing to clean this thing, you know, I'm going to put it back in here and let it roll for another week or two. But overall, you know, phosphates have been on the rise a little bit. It is kind of concerning. Um, I have been feeding more, but I'm almost starting to wonder if maybe, just maybe, as the, if the algae scrubber can't maintain everything on its own. So we'll keep an eye on that. And, you know, I always keep it real with you guys. And I've been checking with my Hannah checker. Last test result came in and my phosphates were at 0.4, definitely uh, higher than they were last time at 0.24, so definitely uh, keep an eye on this. So I'll keep you guys posted. So when it comes to lighting on my reef tank, I've been using these Ocean Revive T247 LEDs for the whole life of my tank, over a year and a half at this point, no issues. I mean, honestly, these lights have performed fantastic. When it comes to budget-friendly lighting or as far as cheaper options, can't beat it you know they're programmable they don't ramp up and down but they've been rock solid tons of power definitely getting the job done now when it comes to mounting have these things mounted roughly 13 inches above my tank you know for two reasons one it helps reduce the disco ball effect of these cheaper lighting and the second reason help increase the spread you know the point is to light your whole roof tank so when it comes to the intensity and the lighting schedule i selected the lighting schedule was just based off my home life as far as, you know, when I can enjoy the tank. But the hardest part was the intensity. Because as you guys know, if you go too bright, you can burn and bleach your corals. If you go too low, you know, you might not get the growth you need. So it's kind of a balancing act. So it took me, like I said, roughly six months or so of playing around with the intensity before I settled on what I have it now, which is 35% blues and 20% whites are the full spectrum. And I run my blues between 11.30 a.m. till midnight, and I run my whites between 1 p.m. and 9 p.m. So overall, I found that schedule to be beneficial for me and my tank, and overall, I think the tank uh, has really responded well. So, you know, one thing I did want to find out, something I don't have access to is a PAR meter. Luckily, you know, with this great community we have on YouTube, I was able to reach out to a fellow reefer, Rico's Reef, and he actually helped me out with it. Now, the great thing about this is that he runs the same Ocean Revive lighting I have on my tank. So all I had to do was provide him the intensities I run channel one and channel two. Also give him the height I have my lighting mounted off my water. And then that's all we needed. So everything I'm giving you all now is going to be information he made a video for me about. I'll put the link in the description. Check it out if you want to see the full video with all the details. But overall, I'm going to give you guys estimates based off his par readings at the settings on his tank. They matched my tank, so should be fairly accurate. Definitely uh, really happy with the results, so let's get to it. So when it comes to powering your reef tank, I'm not going to claim to be the expert or professional to teach you guys. I'm just going to recommend you go do your research, but from what I understand, it is just measuring the usable light or the visible light that comes from your lighting source, LEDs, T5, whatever you have that your corals use to grow and you know keep themselves healthy. So there are certain ranges that you want to aim for, and that's kind of the reason I wanted to find out where my tank was. So that way, anyone's curious out there as far as where they should have their tank, or you know, if they want to simulate what I'm simulating, this will give you some solid numbers to try to recreate. So let's go ahead and get to it. 
So based on his video, with my current light settings, I'm getting roughly 3000 par directly underneath the light source that's out of the water directly underneath the unit. Now when it comes to the water surface or directly below it, it ranges anywhere between 370 and 400, you know, based off the surface agitation, all those things affect your par readings. Now a little deeper, roughly halfway down my tank, I'm getting anywhere between 290 and 300 par. A little deeper, and I'm getting roughly 200 par. And then towards my sand band on the bottom, I'm getting anywhere between 100 par to 150 par. Now that's all directly below the light source. Keep in mind, the spread of the light is kind of a cone shaped spread. So towards the edges of my tank, definitely do not receive direct light or at least directly underneath it so it is a little lower so towards the right and left side of my tank i'm currently getting 130 par at the water surface halfway down the tank getting roughly 90 par and then towards the sand bed it falls off even more closer to maybe 30 or 40 par so definitely something to think about you know for anyone that's wondering is my light intensity too much or is it too high the best word of advice i can tell you you know, because I came to these numbers just by visually, you know, judging my tank. Sometimes these LEDs are a lot brighter than your eyes perceive. So when in doubt, set your lighting lower and then see how your tank responds. Because it's easier to burn a core and kill it than it is to, you know, have too little light and starve the core out. So overall, my tank, the center of my tank towards the middle or upper sections, definitely is best for SPS cores. And the lower parts of my tank and the edges are best for LPS. So I'm pretty close to where I should be as far as core replacements. Could they be better? Maybe so. You know, could my lighting be turned up a little bit? Maybe so. But overall, I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to change it. You know, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? So let me give you guys a quick update on the livestock. You know, overall, everyone's still happy and healthy. You know, still have my yellow ras, my six line ras, my room clown flame hawk flame angelfish and my single blue chroma so overall no losses now the ick is still in my system but i have yet to see any major you know flare-ups or anything over the last i would say eight months at this point so really happy with that and when it comes to the new addition you guys may be wondering about that marine beta he is not in the tank now i say that only because when i first filmed that guy a few days ago he was just brought to the store and i never buy fish it's just brought in for one, you know, you don't know what the health or the situation of that fish is. And for two, it's not settled enough to see if it's eating. So I'll cross that bridge later this week. And I'll let you guys, you know, know later on if I decide to add it to the tank. Now, I will say I did have one loss and it's regarding my invertebrates. I did have the coral bandit and the fire shrimp, but the fire shrimp, unfortunately, has disappeared. So I have my suspicions as far as what happened to him. Someone may have killed him. I'm thinking more than likely the coral bandit shrimp, but overall, you know, no other losses besides that. So when it comes to the corals in my system, overall, you know, I would say everything's doing fairly well, but you know, I still want to highlight a few corals in this update for you guys for good and bad reasons. And we'll start with a few bad reasons. First one being my green or my neon green hammer coral used to be, you know, plump and full of life, but as you can tell, slowly had some heads receding and dying. I have no doubt in my mind it's not due to water quality, but it's due to sweeper tentacles. And I'm talking about from the Hollywood Standard Chalice to the left. So as much as I hate putting my hands in the tank and, you know, disrupting things, I'm going to have to get in here, you know, remove this, re-super glue it, reattach it, you know, a little lower on the rock work, and hopefully I'll let this guy heal and bounce back to, his, you know, his former self. So the second core I'm going to update you guys on is going to be my Duncan Coral. If you guys follow me, you know this has been in my tank for over a year. It's one of my older corals. Started with six heads, now it's over 20. But that's not the problem. The problem is he has not been open and happy like he normally is. Last week or so, it's been kind of doing this, opening fully, closing fully at random times. So can't put my finger on it yet, but I'll keep you guys updated on what's going on with this coral later. Last coral I want to talk about, it's going to be this GSP. You know, I haven't talked about it much because, you know, it's GSP, nothing special, right? Two things I have noticed recently. First one being, it's starting to grow down the rock work now, dangerously close to my anemone. Not sure how that's going to play itself out. And I've also noticed it grow completely out of the water over this rock to reach the back side of it. So definitely something interesting to share. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it looks and I'll just roll with it. So that's pretty much going to cover all the livestock and core updates I wanted to talk about. So let's jump into another reason I made this update. 
If you guys been following me, you know, switch shifts, life's gotten a little busier and I couldn't keep up with my maintenance routine as far as water changes and my alkalinity was the first thing to start suffering. So I finally took the dive and looked into dosing. Now you guys might be wondering, you know, hey, are you still gonna do it in the natural way? Are you still a believer in that? Definitely I am. But when it comes to being able to maintain the routine to make that water change method work, you know, three water changes a week consistently, starting to have a little trouble with that. So this is my plan. I'm gonna start dosing just alkalinity. Now I'm not sure what I'm gonna stick with, but for now, I'll start it with the Seachem product, the Reef Builder, or the Alkalinity Supplement. One, because I like Seachem products, and two, it's a little cheaper in the powder form and it lasts longer. So, you know, I'm still playing around with this. I've only used it one time on my reef tank. One thing I've noticed is, you know, the calculators online that you find, the Seachem calculators, you know, on the forms, all that stuff, it's accurate to a fault, meaning, you know, if you don't know the exact water volume in your tank, after displacement and you didn't keep track of that when you're filling it up it's really hard to trust those calculators it's something i learned how to estimate my tank's water volume roughly between 30 and 35 gallons based off how long it took to fill it up when i first started my tank so ultimately you know i'm gonna figure it out but it's just something that i've learned just right out of the gate you can't trust calculators you know start off slow and always start off with less than what it recommends so before I started this process, I had to consider a few things. The first one being to not nuke and overdose my tank. You know, that's rule number one, don't add too much. I did this mistake earlier, you know, my tank's life with Kalkwasser, adding too much solution to my auto top off, not letting it dissolve. You know, it just added up to a whole bunch of spiked parameters. Did not want to repeat that. So, you know, I used the Seachem's reef calculator and I found out that roughly one teaspoon of the solution will raise my tank's DKH up one. And that's pretty much what I was aiming for. No more than a one full DKH increase per day. And that was my plan. So, you know, after adding it to some RO water, pouring it into my sump, testing my parameters, and that's ultimately what I ended up with, rising it from seven DKH up to 8.9 over the course of two and a half or three days. Now, there have been a few changes I've noticed right away, especially after increasing my alkalinity closer to nine. It's really helped balance out the elevated calcium and magnesium in my tank, meaning they're all working together, corals, coralline, all that stuff's really starting to consume it more. And I've noticed it, you know, it's directly reflected in the coralline explosion I've noticed all over my glass. You know, it was a few spots before, but now it's really starting to spread. And that's definitely signs that, you know, things are starting to get to where they should be. Now, the second thing I noticed right away was my magnesium and calcium levels dropping. Now, keep in mind in my system for the last four or five months, probably longer, I've always had elevated calcium and magnesium levels. Calcium's always read around 490 or 500. Magnesium's always read 1440 or definitely over 1400. After testing my tank tonight, definitely not the same. You know, my magnesium came in around 1390 and my calcium is down to about 460 or 470. You know, this is to be expected, you know, with the increase in alkalinity, means all everything in the tank is consuming more so eventually you know i'm gonna have to address the calcium so for now i'm gonna stick with my water changes and dose on my alkalinity until it can't keep up if i have to end up dosing calcium with it you know so be it Calc calc washer may be an option two part you know, i know there's tons of options people suggest all the time believe me i'm gonna do my homework and i'll make the correct decision for my tank and uh go from there so Overall, I'm just really satisfied with the immediate changes and the positive changes that are happening in my tank. And I think I'm on the right track. So, you know, am I going to keep doing my water changes? Hell yes. You better believe that. You know, I'm still going to get one or two in a week. I just can't deny the effect it has on my tank with exporting nutrients, exporting nitrates, keeping everything in check. And best of all, you know, keeping me in check with not overdosing my tank. You know, water changes always equal things out. And for my system, you know, I'm always going to keep doing them. So overall, pretty happy with how things are going. So that's pretty much going to catch you guys up on everything that's happened over the last few weeks or so. You know, what the future holds, who knows? You know, am I going to add that marine beta? Can't say if I am or not for sure. You know, as far as the algae scrubber and the possible phosphate issue, definitely, uh, you know, very interesting to say the least. So I'm going to keep track of that and get you guys updated on that for sure. But overall, you know, I'm pretty happy with where the tank is. You know, my first attempt at dosing, I didn't kill anything, so I'll call that a win. 
and then I'll make adjustments as needed. So other than that, I think it's a good stopping point. So, hey, as always, you guys definitely like, comment, subscribe. You guys do what y'all do. Y'all be easy. Happy reefing.